Hello, and uh, welcome to today's live stream. Everybody can hear me. Yeah, we're streaming today on Sunday instead of Saturday. A little bit, a little bit of rebellion. Um, actually, uh, part of it is because uh, I've recently gotten a new internship for my uh, Master's of Public Health degree, and um, I was busy yesterday. <laughs> I was very busy yesterday. So um, I am, yeah, day late, but not a dollar short because this is still the weekend and I've always said that these are weekend streams. So yeah, we're just gonna hang out, chill, uh, tie a fly and um, yeah, uh, talk about things probably. I can talk a little bit about my internship. Um, I am cutting the top of my head off here because my hair has grown way too long. And uh, although I will say it's a little bit uncomfortable for me, but I'm, I'm hesitant to cut it because one, I've never cut my own hair. Um, and two, my wife has said that she actually likes the, the longer hair. So um, I might be keeping this for uh, the foreseeable future just for uh, giggles. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I am tying a black doctor today from Price Tanit. Uh, some of you might notice that I tie this fly a lot. Um, as one, it's because I like this fly. Um, I just think the combination of the black silk body with the claret body hackle is just a classy combination. Um, and the other reason why I tie the, the black doctor from uh, price tanner a lot is because it's a popular fly. Um, it's one of my best sellers on Etsy. Uh, I probably have sold, you know, well, relative to things I sell on Etsy, because let's face it, um, classic salmon flies are kind of a niche market and uh, you don't sell a lot of them regardless. Uh, I mean, unless you are completely underselling your work. So I've seen some guys who sell classics, classic flies for like, you know, 30 or 40 bucks. And um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I, I feel like that's underselling your work a lot. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So relative to all the other flies that I've posted on Etsy, um, I've probably sold, you know, two or three times as many, uh, black doctors. So very popular fly. Uh, the doctor series in general is, a, is a popular, um, sell on the Etsy, but, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, so I, I tie this fly a lot and uh, I'm going to tie another one today because I am working on the series of all of the doctor flies. Uh, and last week I tied a Helmsdale, or sorry, the week before last, I tied a Helmsdale doctor. Going to tie the, the black doctor from Price Tanit today. <clears throat> I would like to tie a lot of the other doctors. However, I am waiting on some materials because I don't quite have what I would consider the correct color blue. Um, in the past when I've tied like a blue doctor or a silver doctor, I've tied it using a, a more of a pale blue hackle or a pale blue body. And um, that's been just a little bit of a compromise for the materials that I've had on hand. Uh, I really think a blue doctor and like the silver, the hackle on a silver doctor is more of a medium blue and not so much a pale blue. So, um, I, I did order some materials for whatever reason, they seem to be taking longer than usual in the mail. <clears throat> Who knows? Um, with everything going on right now, uh, it's not a big surprise that some things like <clears throat> some things pack, like packages are taking a little bit longer to make it through the system. So, uh, when I get those, get the, the, that package in, uh, we'll definitely be tying some other, some new flies, some flies that I've never tied before and some flies that I've tied with, you know, uh, substitutes or, or slightly uh, alternate colors. Um, I'll be able to tie them with what I think at least are the, the proper colors. So um, we'll be doing that. Uh, but until then, um, got Old Faithful here, uh, the uh, Black Doctor from Price Tanit and uh, happy to tie it. Um, so yeah, I'm still working on my morning coffee. Uh, it is a little bit on the cool side now, but oh well. It's that's actually probably okay because it's actually fairly warm and humid here, uh, or warm relatively speaking, but definitely humid here in uh, northern Virginia. All 
All right. So because I've tied this fly before, I'm hopefully going to do a little less talking. Um, and I would like to do a little less talking today anyway, because my voice, like I said, I've been very busy with this new internship and my voice is a little bit on the raw side from meetings and chatting with people about the internship. So I am, yeah, just gonna take a little easy. <clears throat> All right, let's get my tools. I've got a little cubby here down below in my desk and I store my tools in during the week so they're out of the way. Uh, i got my wastebasket. I like to tie with my wastebasket uh, just under the vise um, between my legs. Um, that way I can trim stuff and it just drops straight in. Uh, and also when I, you know, cut, cut something, I can just drop it right down between my legs. <coughs> Super convenient. Um, I like it a little bit better than like the baskets that hang off the vise, right? Like belly level, um, because one, I've got a little bit of a belly, and those baskets can bump into it. And uh, and and two, um, I like sometimes I like to get right up over the vise like this, and uh, having those like belly baskets can can really get in the way. So I much rather have the trash can between my feet. Um, just personal preference. All right, so Black Doctor. I've tied one of these before. Nothing nothing spectacularly special. Um, I am tying this on a 3 aught Gaelic Supreme. Um, this hook was actually a, a bit of a rescue. Uh, I had a rather poorly tied Thunder and Lightning on it. Um, <clears throat> from a, from a show, I was doing a demonstration and I was just trying to rush through the fly, uh, at the show. So I, uh, just kind of zipped it off with a exacto knife and here we are. It's one of, the, one of the things about fly tying, which was a little bit, as a beginner, you, you sometimes are hesitant to, to restart a fly. Um, you know, particularly if, the, if it's, you know, using expensive materials. And I, I totally get that. Um, I am definitely not a person to... cut a fly off a hook <coughs> willy-nilly. Um, but, you know, uh, it is definitely good for learning. And oftentimes when you compare the actual cost of, say, you know, feathers versus other parts of the fly, um, the hook in general is probably the most expensive single component. Uh, so reusing hooks is, can be a definite cost saving, um, measure. And in particular with today's like photo technology and photo sharing technology, uh, you can definitely, you know, keep flies, so to speak. Um, even if you don't keep the physical fly. So like, if you're just learning, you might only have you know, a dozen good hooks. Well, that's perfectly fine because you can document your progress using, you know, photos. Um, while reusing the hooks, you know, a couple times each. That's not such a bad, bad way to go. Uh, and it'll save you the cost Hooks. Now, if you're using things like Gaelic Supremes, um, you know, that cost is fairly minimal. And I like, I like tying on Gaelic Supremes because I don't feel pressured to 
tie perfect fly every time. Um, you know, if I was using a Ron Lucas hook or, you know, a vintage hook, <clears throat> I feel a little bit more pressured. And I do tie on Ron Lucas hooks. Um, I, I tie on Ron Lucas hooks quite a bit, actually. Uh, but in terms of like demonstration, um, I've said this before, but tying during a live stream, I'm actually tying a lot faster uh, than I normally would. Um, I'm not taking quite as much care, uh, you know, with thread control. Uh, I may not be making the best material selection choices, um, as you'll see today, because I decided to substitute uh, fluorocarbon mustard, and I actually end up having two turkeys, which might be a little too similar to be in the wing together. Uh, we'll see. Um, I might have to switch switch my turkey choices uh, midstream, but um, you know things like that. Um, I'm not for 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 demonstration purposes. Gaelic Supremes are great um, because you can just kind of you know you don't have to worry quite as much that you're wasting a good hook. Um, and they're perfectly adequate. Um, and it's one of the reasons why, you know, on my Etsy shop, um, my prices aren't quite as high as they could be. Um, certainly could charge more for my flies. Um, I've been told that many times and I, you know, have done some experimenting with like sales prices and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, um, tying on Gaelic Supremes allows me to sell my flies a little bit more cheaply, uh, but still give people a product that is still looks good. Um, and for your, like, average fly fisherman who's just looking for something to put on the wall of their vacation home or, <clears throat> uh, you know, hang in their office. They're not going to notice the difference between, you know, the cut machine cut barbs of a Gaelic Supreme and like the hand filed barbs of a Ron Lucas. They just, they won't. Um, I would because I tie these things for a living or well, not for a living, but you know, professionally. Um, but most people aren't going to notice the difference. Uh, the other thing that's nice about Gaelic Supremes is you can actually fish these flies. Now, I wouldn't fish these particular flies because the 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 uh, the silk um, blind the the silk eye for the blind eye isn't secured um, as well as I would like it for a fishing fly. Uh, again, because these are intended for display. Uh, but, you know, if I were to run the silk the entire length of the body, you could easily fish these. And, um, you know, Gaelic Supremes are a, are a nice alternative to a regular uh, regular old eyed hook. Um, and certainly, I think they're better than some of the spay, spay style uh, blind eyes out there, like the Alec Jacksons. Um, I forget who else made some. Uh, Partridge made an okay one. Um, I, I, I think I've said this on my Instagram, but um, maybe not on stream, but like the Alec Jackson spay hooks uh, were a bit of a hot mess to be frank. Um, they're because their shanks are so long relative to the hook, the hook gap, uh, it's really hard to get proper proportions on those hooks. Um, I see people tie on them all the time. And there are some people who are doing some really great flies on those hooks, but man, getting the proportions right is, is just hard on those hooks. Again, because the hook gap and is so, the hook shank is so long compared to the depth of the hook gap. And so what happens is 
uh, people generally over tie those hooks. So they, they tie wings that are too high for the hook gap. Um, Uh, because you want it to look, you want it to look right with the hook length, but the problem is, is the hook hook shank length isn't in proportion to the hook gap. Then you end up with a wing that's too tall or too long um, for the the gap. So, you know, and and it's all some of that's personal preference. Um, I tend to like a a fly that is generally shorter and taller. Um, whereas I know a lot of people, um, like if you look at any of Mike Rodensic's books or in his flies, he likes them to be longer and uh, shorter or narrower. So, you know, that's a bit of a personal preference, but still he chooses, he chooses to make the, the wing narrower to get that extra length without over overburdening the top of the hook. Um, so uh, it's just some things to think about uh, when thinking about proportions and designing hooks. Um, yeah, all right, so tail. Uh, Tempted. Now I've got this kind of short, stubby crust feather. Um, like I said, this comes from the base of the of the, the uh, of a neck patch, so from a, a tippet patch. Um, I'm tempted to use it, and I'm tempted to use it for a couple of reasons. But I don't think this is long enough, even. It could be. Um, I don't. Uh, nuts, I think I lost a crest. Where did that crest go? And I pulled another one out of the 10. I think I dropped it. Live TV, <laughs> live TV, folks. Um, whereas this one might be a little too long. Uh, I definitely don't. I would generally err on the side of too long than too short. Um, the other thing I could do is see if this tippet patch has another crest that I could use. That may be, in fact, what I'll do. see a couple. They might be a little bit. So this this tippet patch had had a crest, um, but this one's got quite a bit of a twist. So this one's going to need to be straightened. Uh, I will say normally the crests that come from the base of the tippet, so like this upper portion here, are usually pretty straight. Um, and I think this is that's where this one came from. You can see they're pretty broad. They're, they got this nice spade shape and they're pretty straight uh, without any other straightening needed. Um, the only, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, uh, the nice thing about the spade shape and you can kind of see it on the small one. The nice thing about that spade shape is that uh, if you have any kind of like tail veilings that you want to put on top of your tail, um, that spade spade shape really helps um, just let the toppings sit right on top of the tail. Uh, I'm going to check one of the other tippet patches that I have, uh, just in case I've, I've missed a couple. I try to pull them, I'll pull all of the uh, crests off the tippet patch because they're so useful. Um, but you never know, I, I occasionally miss some, but I don't think I did on that one. Let me check. Oh. I guess I did. Uh, 
guess I don't think I've been through this particular patch yet. Yeah. That's a pretty nice one. A little bit flat, a little bit flat for this application. Um, Now within limits, you can do a little bit of gentle shaping. I actually like the length on this one. So that one looks pretty good. Uh, the shape's a little bit funny, but I like the length. So I think um, I'm gonna use it. Maybe. Could use a little bit more curve there. Hmm, what to do? Not a whole lot of options here. Um, because the uh, the straightened crust that I have, like I said, are a little bit long. And for the particular style that I'm wanting to tie this in today, long is not so great. So, yes, I think I will use one of these because they're a little bit shorter. Give me a little bit more options. I hope you don't all mind because I have the window open behind me or over there. And because, uh, like I said, it is getting to be fairly warm and fairly humid here today. You've had some rain, it's not been so great here recently. Very gray. All right, so that actually could be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna have to sh I'm gonna have to straighten some more crests. Now I don't normally like to straighten crests. Um, I've said a lot about this, um, but I don't like I, I don't like using straightened crests if I can help it because the process of straightening them um, it's not a permanent change in the feather. Uh, if the feather winds up in humidity, um, like we have here today. Uh, for a sustained amount of time, uh, it can revert back to whatever shape it was in before it was straightened. Uh, so uh, I'm sure uh, you've probably heard that you can straighten, that you can you know shape feathers or straighten feathers using steam. Um, well, steam does a little does uh, you know there's a bunch of humidity kind of all concentrated into one. Um, experience over time straightened crests um, will revert back to their original sh shape um, whatever shape they grew out of the burden and if that shape wasn't straight then you'll end up with a twisted crest eventually uh, so I try to avoid using shaped uh, straightened crests if I can um, I just on the uh, golden pheasant heads that I have available uh, I'm pretty much down to whatever's left on the head and, and those all need to be straight. So I'll, I'll straighten some more. Uh, but for, uh, for right now, for today's tie, uh, this tail actually works pretty great. So not bad. Um, okay, next, uh, it's got a, let me just put these crests away so I don't lose them. Again, I always store my crests in like an Altoid tin 
great handy play, way to store it. Um, not much to say about that. I do try to sort my crests by color because I get like I get crests from multiple sources, uh, tippet patches, um, golden pheasant heads, and I try to keep them all sorted by color so that when I do, you know, a crest tail and a crest topping, uh, they match or, or they are as closely matched as possible. Right. Uh, okay. So it has, uh, so Price Tanit's Black Doctor has a tail veiling and I'm of course using my favorite tail veiling, um, or a favorite, um, uh, Indian Crow substitute. That of course is a uh, red weaver. So this is a red weaver skin. Um, These are not as common as they used to be. I've had this particular skin for a decade or more now. Uh, it's a pretty great red crow skin, or red uh, Indian crow sub. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have um, on red crow is the uh, kind of crimped tips. So if you look at an Indian crow, uh, feather, uh, I think it's the back feather that is usually called for. Yeah, it looks like it's kind of has like a crimp at the tips. And um, the Red Weaver doesn't have that. Uh, but you know what? I'm okay with not crimping the tips. Uh, you can use like a, a, a piece of um, rubber attached to like, there are different contraptions that you can use to uh, make substitute Indian Crow, such as Red Weaver, look like it has a crimped tip. Uh, but, you know, I'm okay with advertising that this is a substitute. You know, Indian Crow is really rare or is really uh, difficult to come by. And I don't want to sell people a fly and have them believe that, you know, I've tied it with the real thing when I haven't. Um, because that's lying. And, you know, uh, it, it, it's also, I think, more responsible. It's just more responsible. Um, so there's no, no need to try to make this look like anything other than Red Weaver, in my opinion. Because, you know, it's a substitute. And uh, that's okay. And tie that in and again that that nice spade shape of that tail of the crest we use for the tail really helps that sit uh, in there and also i will say one thing about red weaver is it has some pretty great um right, these like fine fluffy feathers which are great for uh as other substitutes uh you could yellow weaver you could use as a substitute for uh toucan um Or you could use it for a substitute for, um, oh, what's the bird? I'm not remembering off the top of the head, my head, but I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll come I'll put it in the comments if I remember, um, or what I, what I was going for there. But yeah, there are other birds that, uh, Weaver's good for. Um, now I will, like I said, it is a little less common to come across red Weaver skins these days. Uh, but one source that, at least when I purchased mine, that was relatively common to find them was when, um, you know, museums would rotate or, you know, go through their collections and, you know, refresh their collections. Uh, they sometimes would get rid of taxidermy that is, you know, kind of outlived its uh, life uh, as a displayable piece and um you know if you if you have a personal contact with the museum you can get uh in touch with like you know the curator their natural collections curator or whatever and 
that those are that's a great source for skins. Usually, you know, make a nice donation to the to the museum. Uh, however, you know, it it can be more difficult to get those contacts these days. Um, I'm sure, some of you probably have heard the story of the feather thief. Um, that was a uh, a classic fly tire. Um, unfortunately, decided to try and, st or well, he did. He didn't try. He, he successfully stole a bunch of taxidermy mounts. Uh, so, uh, some very expensive uh, birds and uh, feathers. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, because of that, it, it, museums are a little bit less willing to work with fly tires. Um, But, yeah, it's too bad. But you can still find some, and, you know, one skin will last you for a very long time and will, uh, you know, you'll, you can tie many, many dozens, if not hundreds of flies with a single skin. So you don't need that many. Um, and if you have a friend, you can share. So and there's still skins out there. Uh, I see them from time to time. So, but those are the best. Those are the best substitutes in my opinion. And, um, you know, they get the coloration right. Um, even if like the physical attributes, the, the feather aren't quite right. All right. Just gonna wind. Now it does have a hackle. It's got a claret body hackle, but I'm going to, um, as usual, uh, whenever I have a floss body, I'm going to tie the body hackle on using the floss and not the thread. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a divot right here, so I'm just going to Let's see. I have there's a little bit of bulk where I tied off the uh, underbody. So I'm trying to just smooth this out a little bit. Okay. That's pretty smooth. That area will be right under the throat hackle anyway, so that'll be okay. Um, great. Uh, black floss. I think I have some in my spares. Uh, I don't have enough. So let's... Last of the black floss. But uh, this stuff comes in, in three plies, so I'll at least get three flies out of this particular ply. Oh, wait. That's right. I've only got two ply left because I actually used the, or I've already used the third ply on this one. Yeah. There we go. 
Just gonna use one ply. One ply goes on smoother more easily. Um, so I usually almost always cut my um, floss down to a single ply when tying in bodies or, or tips tags. Even for tips and tags, I might even um, cut it down to a you know half ply so you can split the plies. Uh, not necessary, but definitely something you can do. And now I'm going to prep my prep the uh, body hackle, which I think it's actually supposed to be a red claret. No, dark claret. Now the nice thing is, is I'm using a guinea throat, so I can actually afford to go a little bit longer on the body hackle fiber length, um, but not too long, so... That one that I already had pulled out might actually be an okay choice. Is that? No, that's too long. Kind of, kind of getting down to the bottom of like the, <laughs> the useful feathers here. There are a lot of feathers here, but a lot of them are are pretty broad and don't taper, uh, so they're not as suitable for body hackles perfectly fine for like throat and collar hackles uh just not quite as useful or quite as good looking as body hackles and i'm kind of really have picked through this lot um this one might be okay might be a little bit long, but if I stay within, you know, the first two thirds, it's not got a lot of taper. I don't know if you can see that. It's not got that much taper, um, but beggars might not be able to be choosers here. I have, there, there are bigger hackles in here, but I need something that'll fit this, this three out. So that might be my choice. Um, Actually, like I said, it's getting a little bit humid in here. Uh, my hands are feeling a little bit oily, so I'm going to go quickly wash my hands uh, to get the oils off um, while, before I wrap the uh, floss. Um, you, if you wash your hands and get those oils off, you don't you don't need to wear gloves while wrapping silk. Um, you could. I don't. Um, as long as your hands aren't oily, so you know after washing your hands, uh, it your hands are per, you know wrapping uh, silks without gloves is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go wash my hands real quick uh, because um, they are a little bit oily uh, just from the you know the humidity and uh, warmth. So be right back. Thirty seconds. Don't go away.
Okay, sorry, I'm back. Uh, just had to... I guess I'd wash my hands, get some of the extra oils off, um, and then... Uh, yeah. and then, my, then my wife came home. Apparently, they've closed one of our recycling centers. Um, yeah, here we have to uh, collect our glass recycling separately, so... Um, she had tried to take uh, her glass recycling to one of our local collection centers, but apparently they'd closed that particular one. So, just got to figure out where to take it. Um, anyway. Uh, and this is Legarten French Silk Floss. Yeah, if, if you hear any extra noise, um, it's because I have my, I, I've opened this door here uh, into the house uh, just because it's been getting, it, it gets pretty stuffy in this room and uh, with the uh, with today's humidity, it has been raining on and off for like the last eight days. Uh, with the, the humidity, it just gets way too stuffy in, in here. So, please excuse any additional unusual noise. So we're going to wind the floss all the way down. Then we're going to start winding it back and then we'll use the floss. Oops. We use the floss to tie in the hackle. Uh, it's kind of a nice trick. Um, it prevents you from having to try and work around the hackle uh, while you're tying in the body, or while you're winding the body. So we'll start wrapping it back down. And we'll stop about somewhere between one fifth and one quarter, just because of the way I like to tie in my hackle. Um, stop a little bit short. You can, I've got a, um, you know, half padded uh, hackle player that I'm just gonna use to put a little bit of tension on the floss. And if you're gentle, it, you know, it doesn't do the floss any harm. And I'm gonna take the hackle and just kind of, I'm going to tie it in as close to the tip as I can. Um, one of the tricks to this method is to not pull the hackle out while you wind it. Um, it is not quite as securely tied in this way as it would be using, you know, wax thread. But um, It's not, I think the the advantages to this technique um, definitely are are worth it. You know, and on a fly, that's not going to get fished. Um, if you're, it's not such a big deal because you can be pretty, pretty gentle while tying in the, the hackle. I'm just going to wrap over the tip of the hackle all the way back down to the eye. Smoothly. You know, as you can see, I'm, I'm flattening the floss as I go. Just make, just like the thread. So it helps smooth everything out. Now this isn't going to be a glass smooth body. I've seen it's pretty impressively glass smooth bodies recently um, on the forums. And uh, this is not going to be one of them. Uh, this is, you know, French garden silk. So it is pretty coarse silk. But that's okay. Uh, and I've always said that I, I definitely prefer my silk bodies to have a little bit texture um, and I think uh, the French 
silks, the, the coarser French silks definitely provide a little bit of that. All right, so as you can see, the hackle is tied in on almost the back side. It's not quite. Uh, but when I wind my rib now, it'll be right where it needs to be. my fingers to, to space out the rib a little bit. I'm going to tie the rib off on the far side. A couple of turns. Trim. Always save your scraps. Um, you can use them to, you know, rib smaller flies. Or uh, what I like to do is I like to use those scraps to put ribs on, you know, my wet flies, my dry flies, my nymphs. Uh, they're good for that kind of thing. So let me just wind this extra floss back in the spool. There you go, easy storage. Great. Next comes the hackle, which I'm going to fold as usual, just on the fly. Pull the hackle out 90 degrees, so I'm pulling it 90 degrees from the hook gently, because it is tied in by the tip by just the floss. I'm just gently going to fold the hackle, wrap, fold the hackle a little bit more, continue wrapping. Tie. So I'm being tied off underneath the hook. A couple wraps of thread. There you go. Yeah, that actually turned out to have a pretty nice taper to it. Although it is a little bit long, so I might struggle to find a galena feather long enough to match that taper. Secure it tightly. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There you go. There you can see the see the taper. All right. So speckled galena throat. Yeah, I talk too much. Um, I think since we're approaching an hour, uh, I'm going to tie on the throat and then call it there. Uh, I don't want to go too long. And this is a, a little bit more of a complex wing than the Helmsdale Doctor from uh, two weeks ago. So I might just split this up. Uh, I think I will split this up actually into two, two weeks. Um, Just so I don't take up too much of your Sunday. Man. This is not a very nice speckled galena feather, but it is the right length. We'll try this one, and if it doesn't look good, then we'll just pull it off and
find another, but this one's the right length. So I'm gonna wax my thread because I'm tying this in by the tip. I'm going to get about two turns with this feather by smart running into some not so nice bits. Let's see how that looks. Like I said, this was not the nicest feather. It's a little bit difficult to see from back there where the camera is, but this was not such a nice feather, but it looks okay. <coughs> That's the thing about wrapping a hackle. You know, the, the hackle fibers get the end it gets separated into like its individual fibers, so kind of it's it's less of the you know look of like what the feather looked like and more of like what the feather fibers look like collectively <coughs> excuse me mm. Ew. So the problem I had with this feather, I'll just tell you, is that some of the fibers look like they've been chewed off short. And I'm just gonna trim some of the more obvious ones. Let's see how that changes it. Oh, there's still a chunk there. You know what? I think I might try to find another feather because oh, that one's not doing it for me. So, just go back. Easy to undo. Let's find another. Let's find a nicer one. That was such a nice feather, too, because it was nice and big. The spotted galena feathers are mm, sometimes difficult to find in larger sizes. I think it's just because of where they come from on the guinea fowl's body. Um, this is okay. Might, you know. Might be long enough. I might not get even two full turns on that one. Do we get another? Now the ideal would be to have a full guinea skin and you can just kind of pick through it, pick through the entire skin to find appropriately large feathers. Um, but I don't have that luxury. Uh, so, yeah. It's, what we got is what we got. Um, just got some strong guinea feathers and that one's 
definitely not going to be long enough. All right, uh, so let's try this one. So let's try this one. Uh, even if it's not quite long enough, it might be long enough, if you know what I mean. You know, it just has to be close. Um, Oh, that's pretty good, actually. That's all things are considered. So, yeah, I'm wiggling the thread back and forth to get it in between the fibers so that I don't trap any. And I'm just going to trim. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. All right, so uh, we'll call it there for the stream. Uh, next week, uh, then, um, as usual, we'll finish off the fly with its wing. Uh, uh, so that way, you know, I'm not taking up too much of your Sunday. And... Uh, Thanks for hanging out. Uh, if you want to see more of my work, uh, head over to my Instagram. Uh, it's at justwondering.brad. Um, if you want to support the channel, uh, help me keep improving the quality of the stream. Uh, you can uh, buy flies and uh, other things off my Etsy shop. Um, it's Studio1213 on Etsy. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate all the, the views and support. And um, you know, I'm always striving to make the channel better um, and uh, have more fun. So, like I said, um, when I get the package of materials in, uh, whenever that happens to arrive, uh, we'll be tying some some new flies, uh, some new interesting flies, and some flies that I've been wanting to try, uh, try tying uh, for a while. Um, but until then, uh, and until next week, uh, take care, stay healthy. And uh, thanks for hanging out.